John and Julie, former Luzerne County Judge Mark Chivarella, no longer a free man. The 61 year old sentenced to 28 years behind bars. This is Exeter Avenue. Exeter Avenue is just blocks and blocks of nothing but nothing but water. It's all in all that adds about 45 pounds to your body weight. Combine that with the extreme temperatures fighting the plane fire and you have a very challenging situation. But whatever came through here at about 2:30 left a, a path of destruction. We also have trees down on Wyoming Avenue. Again, look at this. The uh, the band shell, the Wilkesbury band shell completely rolled over onto its roof. Well, hi, Scott and Marisa. Temperatures here soar to near 100 degrees today, adding some humidity, and it feels that much hotter. All these kids here are keeping cool in the pool. Well, good evening, Julie. Very happy for the skiers. Not so much for the reporter here tonight, though. Behind me, a blizzard is taking place. We are live high atop Camelback Mountain. And they told me David wasn't wearing a helmet on Sunday when he was killed on Mountain Road in Larksville. And they want his death to send a message to everyone who rides an ATV to be responsible. Right behind that door is the attorney who nobody has been able to locate until today. And Newswatch 16 speaks with him exclusively about the alleged investment scheme he is being blamed for. Well, Marisa, this morning we went to the apartment of attorney Tony Lupus here in Plains Township, just up the road. We knocked on his door and to our surprise, the man many people have been looking for for weeks answered. Well, that's when I asked him about the alleged scheme. What about the allegations, though, against the, you know, these people that say you scammed them? Well, everything will be, will be answered in the, as time goes on. Everything will be answered as time goes on? Yeah, as, as, There's, as things develop. That's all I can tell you right now. You'll have to talk to my attorney. Well, were, were you scamming people? What happened? And that's all attorney Tony Lupus had to say. Earlier this month, an attorney representing dozens of people filed a lawsuit against Lupus, claiming they invested their life savings, trusting his word that he would make them money. But according to that civil suit filed against him, there was no investing, the money nowhere to be found. Attorney Ernie Preate represents those dozen potential victims. We showed him our exchange with Lupus. Well, this is a significant development. Uh, you uh, uh, unearthed him. Uh, He's been sought by authorities now for almost two weeks, and so congratulations to you guys. According to pre the number of potential victims could be as high as 80. The amount of money involved possibly in the tens of millions of dollars. They're not wealthy people. They're plain, uh, plain folk, and they're, they're just, they've lost everything. They're, they're, they're retirement. This is their, he said, this will be the annuity for you for the rest of your life. Now they have nothing. And the sheriff's deputies tell me they will keep trying to serve the papers to Lup Lupus again. As of now, no charges have been filed against him. I'm Jim Murdoch, Newswatch 16, reporting live tonight in Luzerne County. Well, Scott and Marisa, after our story last night on the number of truck crashes here at the bottom of this hill along Route 115, we decided to come back here today to see if anything's changed. Now, the first thing we found this morning was a state trooper who had pulled over an illegal tractor trailer up toward the top of the hill. And then, just as my photographer Mike Erat and I were setting up the camera, this happened. This truck driver air brakes ablaze and flew past our camera on a road he should have never been on. Just a few hours earlier, state police pulled over this truck driver who ignored six signs telling him to keep his big rig off Route 115 North. The driver received a $700 ticket. Apparently, some truck drivers are not paying attention to these signs that spell out which vehicles are banned from coming down the steep hill. In the last three weeks, three of them crashed at the bottom. And four years ago, Henry Grower says he was nearly killed while driving his furniture truck. An out-of-control tractor trailer slammed into him. Earlier this week, he won a multi-million dollar lawsuit against that trucking company. If anybody can do anything, just... If, if you have to hire a, or pay a police officer to sit there and make sure no trucks go down the road or maybe put some kind of turnaround there where they can they have another option of, instead of if they make a mistake they don't have to go down the road. You can still see all the damage left over from the most recent crash and folks who work at some nearby businesses just down the road say they're worried someone's going to get killed here. They could kill somebody and not even think twice about it. Can you live with yourself if you killed somebody? Knowing that you're coming down the hill and you're not supposed to come down the hill and your brakes give out, can you live with somebody if you actually kill somebody? 
And now the trooper who had pulled over that truck driver earlier this morning told me they routinely patrol up and down this mountain in unmarked vehicles. Other people we talked to at the gas station told me that $700 fine was simply not enough. And now PennDOT says the drivers need to start paying attention to the signs, and they also say Route 115 here needs to be patrolled more. Jim Murdoch, Newswatch 16, reporting live in Luzerne County. We, we feel isolated here. We are isolated here. No bank, no post office, no grocery store. We have nothing. Nearly four months after the Susquehanna River flowed into the borough of Shikshini, some parts still look as if the water had just receded. Nearly a quarter of the borough's 900 residents fled the ravaged community. Arlene Welch is one who stayed. And there'll probably be more that leaves since we don't have those things. You know, there's nothing here. Nothing at all. The grocery store, gone. The owner, not coming back. The post office abandoned with no signs of any work. The one and only bank, Wells Fargo, moved to Plymouth. This building scheduled for demolition. 91-year-old Anna Grover served as the mayor of Shikshini in the mid-80s. We had everything we needed here. People lived together. Do you feel forgotten? Yes, we are forgotten. Yes. But we're here, we're hanging together, there's people here in this building. What used to be a simple trip to the grocery store for residents in Shikshini has now turned into a 15-minute drive to the closest one here in Nanny Coke. And some senior citizens say they have a hard time getting here. A lot of people don't drive in this building in particular. They don't drive, so they have to depend on someone else to take them. And, and that's hard on families, too. Working families, they, they don't have the time to do that. But some signs of life have returned. The subway and drugstore now open. And for Arlene Welch, nothing will stop her from staying in the borough she calls home. I'll tell you one thing, if there's only two houses here, I'll still stay. I've always been here, and, and I'll stay regardless. The kitchen was in the back on that side, and the dining room on the front this side. As his home the of 40 years came way. down, John Geiske couldn't help but reminisce about the family he brought up here. I had three children. That's the only home they knew, you know, that from birth till when they grew up and moved out. Despite the good memories, he had had enough. Mother Nature had beaten down this father's desire to rebuild once more. Tropical Storm Lee was downgraded from a hurricane when we got to it. I had 52 inches of water through the downstairs. And it was like, this is the fourth time now I had to gut the place. John was able to take advantage of an offer by the Federal Emergency Management Agency to buy his property. All amounts still power rubble now. <laughs> That's it. In less than an hour, his once two-story home was just rubble and crushed stone. Well, we just got our final checks here about a month or two ago. In all, they will take down 14 structures in Lower Swatera Township alone, including this apartment building. In the end, they will all look like this barren land that can no longer be built upon. They sent an adjuster around and he, he estimated the value of the houses pre-flood value. John was able to find another home in Lower Swatera Township, but this one sits on a hill. No flooding worries here. Oh yeah, when it rains, I just roll over and go back to sleep. Telephone, fireplace, Five-year-old Henry Corbin is a typical kindergartner. He loves playing games and King Kong. Yes, King Kong, the biggest gorilla ever known. Ironic, considering Henry has a small frame, all due to Noonan syndrome. Jackson? I was going to say the same thing. Same thing, yeah. His eight-year-old brother Jackson has the same diagnosis. Noonan syndrome is a genetic disorder, and five years ago when the boys were diagnosed, their mom, Anna, also learned she has the same thing. So when it came time to let go of her boys the first day they started school, Anna says she knew St. Joseph Catholic School in Hanover was the perfect placement for them. With the complications that will come as they get older, with being the smallest in the class and things, I don't have such a fear of bullying or, um, you know, anyone making comments because, like I said, it's every day. Love thy neighbor, you know, treat everyone the same. And the feeling is mutual. The Corbin children are just as giving and helpful to everyone as uh, are all the other children are to them. 
In fact, Jackson gave up getting presents for his birthday this year, his way of giving back to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Make-A-Wish sent the boys to Disney and Universal Studios where they got to see Gorillas, Henry's favorite, remember King Kong, and SpongeBob, Jackson's wish. Jackson had another wish for his birthday. To give money to the Make-A-Wish so another kid can have almost the same thing like me. Jackson also got another wish. It came when he jumped rope for heart for Henry, who also has a heart condition. Jackson got a medal for raising the most money at St. Joseph. It was the first time he'd ever actually won anything. And he came home just with this, that medal just beaming and was, said it was the best day of his life. And then you can keep brushing the shoulder, down the legs. Caring for horses takes a lot of time. Can you brush it? Good job. It can be messy and exhausting. And then you have the yellow pole, right? But if you get paid to do this work, it's a nice living. Thing is, 16-year-old Chandler Clouser of York County doesn't get paid to work with these horses and kids at Leg Up Farm. He volunteers. In fact, he's the 2012 Junior Volunteer of the Year, clocking in more than 1,000 hours at this facility that provides therapy and other programs for kids with special needs. In a world that you hear so much um, bad things that are happening in a world that you hear um, statistics aren't good. I just think it's amazing to have a high school student who is so dedicated. Horses and kids, two of Chandler's passions, and when he can combine the two, well that's what keeps this 16 year old here at Leg Up Farm instead of the beach. It's fun to watch the kids progress and some of them with major disabilities like not being able to speak, watching them be able to speak for the first time is something you can't ever really enjoy, um, playing out with your friends and stuff like that. I think it's important to point out that Chandler doesn't have a loved one with special needs. He's not an only child looking for someone to play with. He's known for some time that he wanted to work at a place like Leg Up Farm. And he gave up a chance for a paying job this summer to volunteer here. My mom told me about um, a therapeutic farm coming and I always liked to work with kids and as well as animals. And when she told me that they were going to have a therapeutic farm, I just couldn't wait for it to be up and running. By giving a leg up and a helping hand, Chandler Clouser is making a difference. Sherry Christian, CBS 21 News.